Okay, so let's move on to real estate. Uh, this is going to be very interesting, the way they're going to describe this, because real estate in general, and I might go through this later, is like there's always rules and regulations regarding anti-money laundering in real estate, but in many cases, a lot of it isn't followed. And, you know, it's really quite unfair for like banks and financial institutions have to do all this sort of KYC, CDD, yet real estate gets away with so much of it. Like real estate, if you see all these new buildings in... Toronto and New York, it's so much of it's money laundering, it's terrible, but no one wants, but real estate, it, it, it creates jobs that way, it doesn't look as bad, it creates working class jobs, so there's kind of a push for it to, for a lot of like money laundering to not be checked, but that's just the, that's just the truth with real estate and money laundering, but let's just go through and see what ACAM says. The real estate, the real estate sector is frequently used in money laundering activities, investing illicit capital in real estate is a classic method of laundering dirty money particularly in countries with political, economic, and monetary stability. Okay, escrow accounts generally maintained by real estate agents and brokers and other fiduciaries are designed to hold funds and trust to someone for protection and proper disbursement. Countless real estate and business deals are closed every day using escrow funds. They are attractive to money laundering real estate and business deals are, uh, they are, they are attracted to money launderers because of the large number of diverse transactions that they can pass through them in any deal. Escrow accounts can facilitate the movement of funds by cashier's checks, wire transfers, or company checks to seemingly legitimate individuals or companies, given the large amounts of activity that might be expected in an escrow account. A money launderer could easily disguise illegal activity in the account while appearing to operate the account in a manner consistent with what would be expected. Okay. Many real estate transactions involve a deposit of a large check for, from the mortgage. Yeah as well as the checks and cash required from the buyer at closing. This is more US style here, in other countries it's different. However, as discussed later in this section, cash purchases of real estate are becoming more prevalent. Well, we're seeing that a lot right now, actually. In fact, what a lot of people are doing right now is that they're, um, uh, they um, uh, are leveraging, it's, it's kind of like a layering process, which is also susceptible to money laundering. They're, levering, they're leveraging like uh, their assets for cash loans and to use that to buy real estate and cash. Uh, a money laundering title, in, and also a lot of these these big sort of companies who are buying real estate, they're, they're buying it for money laundering, you know? Not money laundering, but for like dodgy clients. A money laundering title insurance uh, agent can make multiple deposits of cash on a given day at several banks in amounts under the currency reporting threshold, credited to different non-existent closings. The deposits appear to be normal business activities, but they could very well represent the steady accumulation of funds for the purchase of real property by a person wishing to hide the origin of his funds. Ultimately, monies must be maybe paid outright by an escrow agent as cashier's checks obtained by him as wires transfers and or as corporate or escrow checks to straw men or shell corporations. Each closing also entails numerous routine disbursements for the payment of the proceeds to the seller, payoff of the mortgage, real estate commissions, taxes, satisfactions of liens, of liens, and other payments to a bank and other observers. The disbursement of funds at a closing may appear to be one legitimate set of transactions. Money laundering can be easily hidden because of the size and volume of routine escrow account activity smooths out the sparks, i.e. the ups and downs in an account, or multiple deposits associated with money laundering. If this industry, we also try to see the reverse clip. A money launderer might find the cooperative pr a property seller who agrees to be a reported purchase pr to report a purchase price well below the actual value of the property. I don't think you'll see this anymore. And then accepts a difference under the table. This way, the launderer can purchase two million property for one million secretly passing the balance to a cooperative seller after holding the property for a time, the launderer sells it back for its true value of two million. I, I don't think that happens anymore. In the loan back, back money laundering method, a criminal provides an associate with a specific amount of, of illegitimate money. The associate then provides a loan or mortgage back to the trafficker for the same amount with all the necessary loan and or mortgage documentation. This creates an illusion that the trafficker's funds are legitimate. The scheme is reinforced through legitimately scheduled payments made for on the on the loan by the traffickers. Okay, in April 2018, FinCEN published suspected money laundering in the real estate industry, uh, an assessment based on suspicious activity report. SAR filing analysts 
The report makes a distinction between fraudsters and money launderers. Lenders are likely to file a SAR when they are the target of failed or successful mortgage fraud schemes. That threatened the institution's revenues but may have significant difficulty detecting mortgage loan fraud perpetrated by money launderers. This is because money launderers strive to project the image of normalcy by integrating illicit funds through regular and timed payments. Yep. For example, only about 20% of SAR filings with the residential real estate industry reportedly detailed describe suspected structuring and or money laundering. Yeah, look, this is going to be... Here we go. In 2015 brief, the Australian Transaction Reports and Analysis Centre, Ausdrek, identified real estate to be a significant money laundering channel in Australia. Oh, it's, it's off the charts. As an Australian, I can tell you it's unbelievable. It's more than that. The briefs, the brief cites confiscations involving money laundering totaling over $23 million between, that's like a couple homes in Sydney, between 2012 and 2013. According to the brief, real estate is an attractive channel for laundering illicit funds because it can be purchased with cash. This is changing though in the way you think. Like, yeah, you might be able to purchase with cash, but you can't just purchase it with cash cash, you know? The ultimate beneficial owner ownership can be disguised. Uh, yeah, this is big, big time in America because of the way most properties, well, not most, but a lot of properties purchased in LLCs, especially investments. It is relatively stable and reliable investment. That is true. Value may be increased through renovations and improvements. So this is this is a great way to sort of launder money is through yeah, just you know spending all this money on home improvement stuff. You know. All right, money laundering through real estate can be relatively uncompl uncomplicated compared to other methods and requires little planning or expertise. Large sums of criminal proceeds may be integrated into the legitimate economy through real estate investments, a placement and layering phase. Properties may also be sold for a profit or retained for residential investment or vacation purposes, integration phase. In Australia, common money laundering methods involving real estate are as follows. The use of third party straw buyers as described as clean skins. Use of loans and mortgages to cover for laundering, which may involve lump sum cash repayments to integrate illicit funds into the economy. Manipulation of property values to disguise undisclosed cash payments through over and under volume or flipping homes through successful sales to increase value. Structuring cash deposits used to purchase generation of rental income to legitimize illicit funds. Conducting criminal activities such as the production of cannabis or synthetic drugs at the purchase property. Use of illicit cash to make property improvements to increase the value and profits at sale, use of front companies, shell companies, trusts, and other company structures to hide beneficial ownership and obvious links to criminals, use of gatekeepers such as real estate agents, conveyances, or solicitors to conceal criminal involvement, complicate the money laundering process, and provide a veneer of legitimacy to the transaction. Investment by overseas-based criminals to conceal assets and avoid compensation from author authorities in their home jurisdiction. Okay. The report cites methods for detecting money laundering through real estate where transactions intersect with the regulated AML CTF sector from when real estate transactions involve financial institutions in the form of loans, deposits or withdrawals. It also outlines red flags that should prompt further monitoring and examination, particularly when multiple indicators are present. These red flags include various use of cash to aggregate funds for property purchase or down payment or to repay loans, multiple purchases and sales in a short period of time, sometimes involving property over undervaluing the straw buyers, use of offshore lenders, unknown source of funds for purchase, including incoming foreign wires where the originator and beneficiary customer are the same. Ownership is the customer's only link in the country in which the real estate is being purchased. Okay, so there is a few things there. We don't know yet. In a five-part Towers of Secrecy series published in 2015 by the New York Times, pierced the secrecy of more than 200 shell companies that have owned condominiums at the Time Warner Center, a high-end property located in the heart of Manhattan. Yeah, a lot of those big buildings, like those famous ones, are just money laundering havens. In the investigative series, the newspaper found that nearly half of all expensive residential properties are now purchased through shell companies. It's huge in America. The United, just tax evasion. No, not tax, well, tax evasion, yeah. Tax avoidance, not, not, not avoidance, evasion. At the time Warner Center, 37% of the condos owned by four foreigners, at least 16 of which were the subject to government inquiries, including housing and environmental fraud. The foreign owners have included government officials and close associates of officials from Kazakhstan, from Russia, Colombia, Malaysia, China, Kazakhstan, and Mexico, and they mainly use limited liability companies for the purchases. Oftentimes, signatures on the property documents were eligible, blank, or signed by a lawyer without with the lawyer's contact information registered. The paper points points out there that no legal requirements for the real estate industry in the United States to identify beneficial owners, this is changing though, or examine their backgrounds. In 2016, subsequent to New York Times series, Finson began issuing a series of geographic target, or target orders 
GTO is to help law enforcement identify individuals in inquiring luxury residential properties through limited liability companies or other opaque structures, the use of, without, with, of bank financing. During 180 days, each outstanding GTO US title insurance company are required to identify the natural people behind shell companies used to pay cash for high-end residential. In, anyone who's paying cash for high-end residential, you can guarantee is a criminal. In specified US metropolitan areas uh, that exceed specific, specified dollar amounts prescribed in each area. It is important to note that this context all cash refers to transactions that do not involve traditional financing and doesn't necessarily reference the use of physical cash. That is important. 